Alrighty guys, I'm Morthodon and we are back for Soul Leader episode 21. So, apologies for the water heater in the background that you hear. Um, it's just heating our water, so it just happens to be running right now. It's happened in other videos too, and you can, you can definitely hear it, but hopefully with me talking and it, it kind of drowns it out a little bit. And then once the episode's playing, you won't hear it too much. It should go, it should stop soon. But anyways, uh, last episode we had uh, Maka fighting Maka Ansel fighting Krona, and Maka, I believe, gave in. I believe like that was actually Maka entering uh, Soul's mind with the demon dude in accepting the power. I I kind of thought until like the very end, I kind of thought maybe it was a trick to get Soul to accept the power. Like, maybe, like, if he sees Maka accept it, he'll accept it, you know? But the way it seemed like Maka was out of control, but Soul was still in control, makes me think that she is, she did personally uh, accept the power. So, and she went uh, she went a little crazy, right, on, uh, on Krona. We got to see a little bit of that fighting. She was like a wild animal. Demon dude was like, I'm in control now. <laughs> and uh, so... Yeah, interesting stuff going on. I'm looking forward to see how this fight happens. We also had a little bit of backstory on Krona, too, which was very sad. I definitely hate Medusa even more, and I don't really blame Krona for being psycho crazy pants. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, guys, I'm looking forward to this episode, so let's jump on in, shall we? Alrighty, we are going to start the episode in 5, 4, 3, 2... One, go! Huh, I say go instead of now. Oh, I have my volume turned up. Because I've been watching other shows. Oh. We got death heading towards... Erica. It seems like. That's Erica's stuff, right? Oh, okay, so they're still running. That was just some, like, little traps they set behind. Whoa. Creepy hallway. Oh. Maka going crazy. <clears throat> <laughs> Krona is going to look crazy too. Alright. I'm going crazy too, because it's opening time. I don't want the song to change, I like it. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I was told what episode it changes on, but typical me, I can't remember. I could always go back and look at the message that was sent regarding it, but I don't. I don't want a countdown. <laughs> Even though, assuming that it happens, because I think it only changes once, if I'm not mistaken, so assuming that once might be around halfway, which, if there's 51 episodes and we're on episode 21, that means the halfway point of the show's coming up, so using that kind of logic, it might be within the next, like, five episodes or so. <laughs> I don't want it. My goatee's getting too long. It looks like on this side it's sticking out a little bit. Here we go. Shoot them all. <laughs> oh no. So destroy them. Don't just do nothing. <clears throat> Ha <laughs> 
That was, like, the most common rational thing that, um, Patty has ever said. Jesus! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what the heck? What was that an impression of? What? What? Oh, they're injecting the black blood into the kitchen. Shit. Does that mean it's gonna be a kitchen and have bl black blood and be, like, exponentially stronger? Or is the kitchen already so strong that it doesn't need black blood? It's already, like, strong. This is just a way to wake it up. I don't know. Theories. Oh. That's an episode title. <clears throat> I don't like crazy maca. <laughs> I hate wobbly giggles. Chrono was actually able to pierce maca even though it didn't seem to bug her. Oh. Oh my god. This is a weird ass fight. I agree, soul. Jesus, this isn't the maca we know. What the heck? Oh, is this the actual maca? <laughs> it's not that different from how you normally are. Huh. Is... Maka gonna somehow bypass the madness in Krona and actually talk to Krona, maybe? Like the non crazy black blood Krona? Is that it? Hmm. The sky. It's like a tiny planet. Oh, it's little Krona.
Oh. The black blood's been in Krona for so long, it might be that the real Krona might not have ever been able to grow up, and that's why it's represented as a kid like that. Oh, Jesus. Blair Strong. God damn it. Even I can tell. Yeah, I don't even speak Japanese, and I can tell that Blair is doing, like, the nya thing in her speech. Oh, jeez, they're doing something. Oh, no. They're combining. Jesus. <laughs> oh god. Now they're just showing off. Oh no. This guy, what the hell? A quintuple decker. What? <laughs> Oh my god, what did this episode just turn into? Damn. Death Scythe is, like, not liking this. Damn. He's a father. to the soul world. Just indecisive. Creepy Twisted Side is in here, too.
Man, I feel so bad for this kid. I hope Krona gets some kind of salvation out of all this. <coughs> Excuse me. Is, is this just like... Is this just how every day goes for Krona? Or just when they're fighting? Or... Is that Maka's little kid? Man, I'm so, like, frustrated with, like, how much I feel bad for Krona. I don't know how to explain the feeling. Oh, God. Oh, shit. So, I guess Maka entering Krona's soul kind of helped Krona, like, resist the madness a bit. Alright, so we have Maka back. Is Maka gonna draw a Krona a circle, maybe? 
What's Maka going to do? I like how Maka's blood isn't black anymore. Friends. <clears throat> Sorry for all, like, the little midi coughs. I swallowed the wrong way before I started drinking the episode. Um, before I started watching the episode from drinking. And now it's been like, I feel it in my throat this whole time. <clears throat> God, the shadows are terrifying. <gasps> There's water! Kind of representing the tears a bit, maybe. different little outro with Krona in it! And obviously Maka as a kid. Aww. Oh, God. This episode was such a weird... weird emotions that it put me through, I felt like. I'm gonna give it another cough, try to clear my throat a little more, guys. <coughs> Apologies. I hate when you swallow the wrong way and your throat just does not feel the same after. Wow, what an episode, guys. That was an amazing episode. That is the end of episode 21, guys. Wow. So, I, I guess, I mean, from the th sounds of it, Krona's done. Like, that was the, that was the defeat of Krona, you know? Uh, which I absolutely love, you know, I don't need every fight to just be like beat this person until they can't move or they're dead or whatever um, That was amazing, you know, that was a, That was a, a saving rather than a beating story there and you know last episode kind of set us up for that with like I like I said at the start of this one I don't blame Krona at all like 
I obviously didn't like Krona before because I didn't know what Krona went through. I just thought it was, you know, someone that craved power, met up with Medusa, and then Medusa found a way to give him power, you know? And, uh... But... No, it was just Medusa's kid. I don't know if it's, like, blood-related kid. Like, she said it's her kid. But they just don't look alike, you know? That's the only thing that I'm not sure of. So I don't know if, like, it's her actual, like, blood-relative mother or not. But... <clears throat> But goddamn, like, last episode was extremely sad just seeing what Krona went through, and then seeing, you know, young Krona in his little soul world that he has, you know, ask, like, basically asking himself questions, and they, he stated in there that it's not a dual personality, it's just these emotions that everybody has, but he's just denying them, you know, which is basically him passing to all those questions is his way of denying his emotions, you know? Um, <clears throat> but, like, that whole scene of being, like, inside that circle, asking the questions, just seeing how how sad he was and how he couldn't answer any of those, because, like, I got, like, I obviously got a hostile feeling from the shadow in the first place. I thought it was, like, the evil black blood side, but... I think it was almost, I think the shadow was almost, like, the the real, like, almost the normal Krona trying to help, you know? And the current Krona just kept denying it. And, but, like, as the episode went on, I just found myself, like, in a weird emotional place because, you know, I was sad, but I was also, like, so frustrated, too, where, like... At some points, I was, like, almost moved to tears because I felt bad. But then I was getting, like, just more angry that this poor kid had to go through this, you know? But it really, like... Just the fact that it brought me on this emotional roller coaster as a viewer means they did a, you know, a fantastic job displaying this episode to, uh... To us, you know? Like, I, I absolutely loved it, and... I mean, I, see, I still think even if someone has this, like, madness in them, I mean, maybe I would look at it differently if there was, if this was, like, a world where this kind of stuff existed, you know, where, like, the black blood took control and it wasn't really Krona, but I still feel like Krona needs to pay for what he's done, so I kind of don't want Krona to, like, you know, immediately flip good guy and then go to, like, the DWMA and take classes, you know? I kind of hope there's, like, repercussions for his actions because I still feel like they're his actions, you know? Kind of like the whole multiple personality disorder kind of stuff. Even if you have multiple personality disorder and another personality hurts someone, you know, that the whole person needs to take responsibility for those actions, I feel like. So, you know, maybe my opinions would feel a little different if I was in that world and I could be like, okay, the Black Blood's a completely different entity that, like, possessed him. But obviously, since we don't have that kind of stuff in this world, it's, uh... I, I still think that Krona needs to have some kind of, like, justice for this. But I hope it's not, like, anything like death. Like... I think Krona just needs a a healthy environment to get some, you know, medical help through all of this, you know, like, or, like, mental help, I guess might be the better way to word it, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if all the black blood is just completely gone now, we didn't, we didn't explicitly see that, we saw that Krona seemed to be a, little, a bit different, uh, still had his, like, I don't know how to interact with people, but Maka just kind of, like, forced her way in, kind of like she did within the soul, you know? And, and hugged her and said, like, let's be friends, you know? Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure if the black blood is still there, but Ma Krona is just suppressing it. Or if it's, like, Maka, where it's, like, mostly gone. Because Maka was getting hit, and uh, her blood was red now. And it was black earlier in the episode. They even established that with, uh with her getting cut, which I assume is why she got cut, 
was to establish that her blood was black at that point, and then, you know, Soul pulled her out of that, you know, madness, and then her blood returned, so... Yeah, I don't know. It's super interesting um, how they how they handled this situation. I'm just really curious where it went from here. But I really liked that Death Scythe got so worked up about it because I truly feel that even though I don't have any kids, I definitely can understand that that feeling where you look at things differently when you have kids. And seeing Death Scythe react that way, whereas, you know, Dr. Stein didn't react as much, is the difference between someone who has kids and who doesn't. You know, thinking about this, like, this poor kid that was raised this way, you know, and, uh, and you start, like, picturing your own kid and imagining if you, if that happened to your own kid or something, you know. And then it just brings you to a whole, like, heightened emotional state. Uh, I really liked that part of this episode. I'm not always a fan of Death Scythe. I always think he's, like, goofy, but a little too weird sometimes. But I, I absolutely liked him in this episode. It was fantastic. Um, but... But, yeah. Oh, man. I I do really hope that Krona can get some help, though, and maybe, like, maybe eventually come to the DWMA and just have friends and kind of, like we start to see the changes slightly where Krona B is able to come out of his shell a little bit, you know? I wonder what... Since Medusa is planning on throwing Krona away after all this, I wonder if Krona... I mean, I wonder if Medusa will care that Krona is kind of getting flipped here, you know? Like, flip sides. Will... Because sometimes people can be selfish with that kind of thing. Like, when... When she's when when Krona's completely under Medusa's control, Medusa's like, "Oh, I have no need for her or for him." But as soon as Krona is showing free will and going a different direction and defying orders, will Medusa be like, "No, get back here, you little shit!" Even though like, even though Medusa had no plans for for him anymore, I I'm wondering if that kind of personality will come out of Medusa at all, or if it's just gonna be like you know, whatever, you can have that failure of a kid kind of thing, I don't know, that'll be interesting as well, but, yeah, I mean, as far as the crazy fighting goes, it was obviously weird seeing Maka that way, because that's, that's not our Maka, you know, um, and she was even far more crazy than Krona, and I wonder if, I wonder why that is. Like, we know that Krona has a bit of that crazy side in him, but why was Maka so much more over the top? My my only thing I can think of is uh, Krona's been with this madness for a lot longer and has gotten used to it, whereas during the episode, the demon said that Maka is acting this crazy because it helps hide the fear. And maybe the fear is more nullified in Krona because Krona grew up all his, pretty much all his life with this, you know? And, uh, and has gotten used to it and doesn't have to compensate for the fear as, with as much crazy, you know? Whereas Maka is just harnessing this power and, uh, needs to, to really go, like, full crazy pants to, to, to try to drown out the fear, you know? That's the only thing I can think of, but I really liked the, uh, even just, like, Maka being in, like, the floating nothingness and, like, interacting with the souls, Maka seems so calm and in control there. It was very interesting how, like, how, how much that contrasted the madness that was coming out in the, you know, in the fight versus Maka being so, like, insanely calm within that, you know, mind space she was in. Uh, I thought that was very interesting. And I, I like the way she was, you know, talking about the different souls that she was interacting with and and stuff like that, and talking about, like, the dryness of Krona's soul, and then, you know, we had... When Krona gets saved, she... Or he has water in his little, like, soul world and stuff like that, at the same time that he's, like, crying and stuff like that. Kind of, like... It's kind of like 
you know, contrasting the the dryness that Mako was talking about earlier with adding some some moisture now, as well as the tears, you know, being a representation of that, you know, water that's being put in there. So it kind of has like two different contrasts that that it's going off of. But but yeah, this episode is fantastic. I loved it. I can't wait to see what happens next with uh, with Krona's story because they've definitely turned Krona around from just being some crazy bad guy and a, a character I really enjoy, so man I just can't imagine they'd do that with Medusa, I'm sure Medusa's just gonna be one of those bad guys that has to get defeated <laughs> but but yeah, other than that we had a little bit with uh, Death as like the final thing that we can talk about uh, he ran into some like little tadpole bomb things that Erica left behind and he ended up riding them to catch up with them really quickly. So he is hot on their tail, I believe. Uh, and we obviously had, like... I don't know if it was a reference I misunderstood or something. But we had the whole, like, internal Patty and Liz thing. Trying to work uh, death through, like, the inconsistency of the tadpoles. And, uh... Patty seemed a lot more serious. This well, not not exactly serious, but a lot more like usually Patty just says like one word and then giggles, you know. But Patty actually had like a logical statement in here, and then you know Liz wanted Patty to explain in like in Patty's own like simple way, and just Patty was just like did some crazy face and, like, get your ass moving or something. And I don't know if that's a reference to something, because then Liz said that was a pretty accurate uh, impression. So I don't know what uh, Patty was trying to do an impression of that made Death so upset. Um, so let me know in the comments what, what that was. Because I think I completely misunderstood something there, or something was lost in translation, or it was some kind of Japanese reference that I just didn't understand, but, um, or maybe I'm overthinking it and it's really nothing that we're supposed to understand, you know? I don't know, but, but that was just a funny little scene once again, obviously seeing Death struggle with his, uh, with his, like, OCD and stuff like that was, was interesting, but, <coughs> man, I tried to hold that one in until the end, <laughs> did not work, but, but yeah, cool episode. I assume that we're going to get a little bit from Krona in the next episode, maybe. And then we're also going to have Death catch up with... Uh, I'm assuming we're going to have Death catch up with Free and Erica. Maybe one of them will stay behind to fight Death and the other one will keep going. I'm not sure. Or will Death fight both of them? I don't know. That'll be interesting. But And then we also have Medusa who still is kind of toying around with Dr. Stein and Death Scythe. They haven't really gotten too much into their fight. They had a few moves that they've done to each other, like, not not this episode, but the previous one, I think it was, uh, messing with the, like, arrow move and everything, and then uh, Dr. Stein's, like, soul stitches kind of thing. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to resolve first. I was trying to think of, like... They're going after the Kishin, so are they going to be able to awaken it? Is Medusa going to get beaten before they awaken it? Is Medusa going to be a continued villain and she's going to end up getting away? Will she be defeated here? Will the Kishin get out, but everyone here will be defeated and the Kishin will be the new bad guy going forward with the season? I don't know, like, what's going to happen here. I honestly, like, I'm really not sure because I could see it going... Either way, like, so many different ways, I guess I should say, but I'm just looking forward to watching through it, so. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Um, I very much appreciate it if you're watching this on Patreon and you're supporting me and everything. Very much appreciate it. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget, you can go to my Patreon. I have Patreon shows that I watch exclusively on there, so you can check that out and... Uh, and something will obviously have replaced Soul Leader by this point, so I'll be watching something, who knows what, at this point. But if you're interested in that and you're interested in supporting me, check that out. The link is in the description. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.